Thank you very much. So, uh, good evening. Uh, I, I will uh, speak um, about the woods used um, in traditional woodworking in France only. Sorry. And uh, um, is a mix between some textual part and some from the endangered species used in this work. So, as you know, cabinet making woods, often called precious wood, can be, as you know, woods from temperate uh, regions or tropical timbers. Those woods are traditionally used in cabinet making, musical instruments, marquetry or sculpture in the form of solid wood or veneer sheets. The variable preciousness, according to the times, refer to the properties, the rarity, and the price. They are usually distinguished from the more common woods in Europe, such as fir, spruce, ash, or poplar, and the tropical woods known as exotic. So we'll talk today about some tropical species, especially those who are endangered. Our work is inspired by the reflections and considerations of Pierre Détienne from Montpellier Sirad, and who make a lot of work on the recognition and identification of woods used in 18th century in France. And it's also based on the wood carried out with the Louvre Museum for the André Charles Bull Cabinet Maker Collections and the European Coast Program on Music, which is in collaboration with the Cité de la Musique in Paris. So, André Charles Boulle was a French cabinet maker who is generally considered to be the preeminent artist in the field of marquetry. Cabinet maker of the king, he was the first of this time to apply gilt bronze to the furniture. He worked in the Louvre Palace under Henry IV, in Versailles under Louis XIV, and also under the reign of Louis the Fifteen. Yeah, you, you can. Please, if you can switch out the light. Yes, even this. Less light. Uh, yeah, thank you. So his method, but which uh, he beautified cabinet work by the introduction of forest substance, was quite new. This famous artist was a great worker in ebony, gradually improving his work by inlights and clever coverings with ornament of brass and other metals. His great success, however, was the tortoiseshell inlay. It was cut out and encrusted with arabesque and ornaments of thin brass and white metal, many of which were elaborated engraving as well as being inlaid. In the second half of the 18th century, between 1755 and 1772, was published in France the famous Encyclopédie, or Dictionary of Science, Arts, and Crafts, edited by the famous philosophers Diderot and Alambert. The purpose of this encyclopedia was to gather knowledge and expertise in all areas, but also to popularize the latest advance in science and technology. It is precisely in this context that appear in 1774 the art of cabinet maker, L'Art de Menuisier Ebeniste, written by the master carpenter, André Jacob Rubo. Because of this quality, this book was for a long time a reference for cabinet, uh, carpenters and cabinet makers. The Rubo is considered even today as the best traditional wood <coughs> sorry, joinery treaty. It develops and discusses in detail the technique and uh, knowledge of the craft and uh, uh, the carpentry who watched under Louis XV in his golden age. Also, Rubo admits uh, not to have been observed all the woods as he would like it. In fact, some of these remarks might now seem a little bit naive and some of the trees he mentioned are not really easy to identify in a first reading 
because what he describes is just impossible. For example, he speaks about the tree who grows at the same time in Philippines and in Siberia. But of course, we must read this book as we were in 1710. It's the moment of France has lost uh, its possession in North America and East Asia, which became English um, colonies. In tropical Africa, France just conserved Dakar and other uh, small insignificant counters. So, in the third part of uh, the Rubo book, he describes 48 exotic woods according to the main features, as color or smell. They are recorded, but with, without the Latin name, <coughs> because at the time was only known by a few um, naturalists. Despite this, it is possible to recognize some um, woods uh, because the descriptions are quite uh, uh, precise. Some of them, of course, uh, this is a species that is not endangered but used um, uh, in cabinet maker, like Camellia sedaraj, he describes as a tree of India, rose and light wood, Brosimum guianensi, hard compact wood, and so on. Peltogen, that he say, a purple wood that is sold by the Dutch people and we sometimes call China wood. So, you can see a very material and physical description of woods, mainly based on the color and the mechanical properties, but he often adds geographical locations and original zones. For people who is involved in restoration and conservation of um, historical furniture, the rubo is still a very big important source of documentation. So, we we'll go now with some of these uh, endangered species was a very used at the time. And with the term of acajou, so rubo names two species. One is a walnut grows in Malabar, which is native for the islands of America and Brazil, which must be Cedrella odorata. And the other, we'll see later, is Suitenia maogani. So, our first uh, Cedrella odorata is a historical valuable Latin uh, American timber we saw yesterday, Spanish cedar, and it has been exploited in many, many regions. So now the species is considerable to be vulnerable. Um, it's very important is in, uh, as a Spanish cedar in English commerce. The aromatic wood is in high demand in the, the American tropics because it's naturally termite and root resistant. So Spanish cedar is easy to work and makes excellent plywood and veneer. The wood is the traditional choice for making the neck of the flamenco and classical guitars and occasionally used for tops of veneers on electric guitars. Freshly cut, our wood is pinkish to reddish brown, but upon exposure, it becomes red or dark reddish brown, sometimes with a purple uh, cast. It is reported to be darkest when grow in the dry sites, and this type of wood is preferred by the local craftsmen. From the earliest day of exploration and colonization in tropical America, Spanish cedar has been one of the most important timbers of the area. The wood became an article for the export trade during the 18, when the cigar industry was demanding the use of this Spanish cedar for packing cigars and make cigars humidors. So Spanish cedar is actually more closely related to through maoganese. Density and mechanical properties can vary widely depending on country of origin and growing conditions. Some of the wood available at present come from plantations where younger, fasting growing trees produce wood that is a lower in density and paler in color that would cut fresh from forest uh, in the wild. So we say maogany, unprecise vernacular um, term, refers uh, to several varieties of wood, such as uh, Suitenia uh, maogany or Calla ivorensis. Their common point is a very thin and even grain, medium hardness, and uniform color, 
ranging from pink to dark red, sometimes banded. <coughs> it is a, a species native to southern Florida and the islands of Caribbean Sea. The wood has been internationally traded for over 400 um, years, and a small leaf mahogany was introduced in India in 1795, and since has been planted through the tropics on a small scale in timber plantations and as ornamental occasionally also present in Africa. Suitenia wood is regarded as the world's finest timber for high-class furniture and cabinet work. Its popularity is especially due to its attractive appearance in combination with ease of working, excellent finishing qualities, and dimensional stability. It is also often used for interior trim, like a paneling, doors, and decorative borders. Also for both wielding, plywood, planking, and the house. The wood was used for cabinet making and marquetry, and since the late 18th century in veneer. And of course, also in guitars or violins for the sleeves and body. Present day musical instruments are frequently associated to a few emblematic wood species for given functions. And these chosen materials participate to the specificity of instruments. Amongst the no archetypical species for Western musical instruments, several are tropical woods, which use were adopted at different epochs of the last centuries. Well-known examples are uh, Pernambuco, Cisalpinia equinata, which started to be used at the end of the 18th century and became the first choice for um, violin balls. Or Roselwood, Dalberia nigra, or after Latifolia, which became a standard for guitar bodies starting from the 19th century. So violin bows are now in Europe, firmly associated with uh, Pernambuco. This wood started to be tried for bows in the second half of the 18th century, and later became the exclusive standard for highly prized classical modern models of bows because of its adequate specific gravity. Most of hardwoods used from Renaissance, especially the South American woods, including also a snakewood, Brosimum guianensi, adopted in Baroque era time, had extremely high density and modulus, and the introduction of these woods probably allowed the, develop the development of the long and thin bow sticks of Baroque time, associated in trend implying techniques. <clears throat> From the second half of 18th century, Transitional woods were ma made using also Baroque woods and some lighter species, Sufabrosimum rubescens and Pernambuco. These late models have a concave curve, higher head, and were associated to increasing virtuoso playing technique and wider performing room. Uh, the lower density and exceptionally low damping of Pernambuco might have facilitated very dynamic playing techniques a more powerful emission. Of course, the introduction through history of new or exotic woods in the instrumental making culture go far beyond these two examples mentioned. And many particular species were introduced in this way at different times and for different instruments. A good example of this coevolution in shape structure um, is the choice uh, for woods from convex to concave profile with different section. One minute, two minutes. Two minutes? Uh, okay, uh, I think I will do it quickly. So, also extracted from this uh, Rubo uh, book, um, have some species who are more specifically uh, adapted to the guitars in the program we are made it, and also um, endangered, like uh, all the Dalbergias and, <coughs> and 
uh, of course, Madagascar and uh, other species, are still used for um, guitars and percussional ideophone um, instruments. Uh, of course, uh, uh, ebony, so uh, we don't go to uh, speak about uh, wood anatomy, of course, but uh, as uh, Peter Bass mentioned this uh, uh, morning, it's very difficult to identify and more difficult when you have only shitter veins. So for us, it's important to have some uh, reference because the people who was producing the same type of furniture with the same products. So that uh, book also describes from some uh, the, the, the way to cut when the species are very hard, for the diaspiros we saw before, and with a special uh, particular um, wayacum or lignum vitae, who was now actually, I think, we used to make furniture, but before uh, was very important for Louis the Fourteenth, the king, who made some special arrangement, police arrangement for his colonies for producing this uh, wayacum wood. And of course, I don't go to speak about Pterocarpus santalinus because uh, we have this morning a very excellent uh, explanation. And so what's happened today is with this species endangered, when we need to restore a part or to have a sheet, sometimes it's very difficult to have um, uh, the normal wood. So there is some ancient uh, uh, traders almost in France who still have an, a lot of um, stocks. And when the beginning of Cites, they blocked the stocks and they are working only with uh, museums or with restoration. And for that we can get what we need. Of course, we spoke yesterday with the substitution of new materials. We have some um, very expensive violin bow that now is in carbon and not more in wood, which become less uh, important. And some people are also more specialists like that. This was one expertise we make for the um, um, attorney. Was some problem with this uh, bureau, which uh, this style. Uh, Louis the 15, who was sell as solid rosewood. So, for the different problems, we went to get a samples, and the solid rosewood was uh, a very nice poplar, and uh, a rosewood printed and varnish. So, no more rosewood. We don't need any more. This is a very with the way to substitution. So, thank you very much. Thank you.